Sometimes chest pain can be more than just pain in chest. Sometimes it is not. Whether it is due to heart attack or heartburn, every chest pain requires attention. Hello everyone, I am Dr. Reshma. I am ER physician from NH Bengaluru. Today I am joined by Dr. Srinath Kumar TS. He is a senior consultant and head of department emergency medicine, NH Bangalore. Hello, sir. Hi, Reshma. Very Hello. good. Very nice of your introduction. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. Sir, we are here today to discuss regarding uh, causes and signs of emergency in uh, chest pain. Are you ready, sir? Yeah. Okay. So, first thing first, what causes chest pain? See, to elaborate the causes of chest pain, it's always good to know from the uh, front to the back. So you know that there are ribs. Mm. So it can be because of the rib pain mm. or muscles which are inter interconnecting the ribs. That can be because of that. Mm. And then you have your heart mm. which can cause the chest pain because of the heart. Mm. And then the lungs. Mm. So because of the lungs, mm. there can be a chest pain. So in this way, every part can mm. cause a pain. Mm. Also sometimes pain in the neck or pain in the stomach. Pain in the back can also come come and show us chest pain. Yes, exactly. Okay. Correct. So, when is a chest pain an emergency? So, whenever somebody feels that there is a tightness in the chest, he feels that there is lightheadedness along with chest pain, and then sometimes radiating to the arm or to the back and also sweating mm -hmm. and then he can also have a syncopal attack mm -hmm. and sometimes he can also have something called a palpitations mm -hmm. that he feels that uh, himself having mm -hmm. the heart rate more. Mm -hmm. So these are the things which a person can uh, be looking in and then feel that there is a chest pain which can be dangerous. Okay. What if they have fevers or a chest pain that doesn't go away? Yeah, sometimes there is a, uh, the, we call it as a pneumonia, mm. which can also cause a pleuritic type of a pain, which can be felt by the patient for a long hours. Mm. Whereas when you take it for a chest pain of the, because of the heart, mm. it's usually a minute one, but it is the most severe part. Okay. Yeah. So apart from heart attack, what are the other dangerous causes of chest pain? So apart from heart attack, we, as we discussed, so they can be if somebody falls from a bike or an accident he, there can be just uh, tightness because of the air trapping we call it as in medical terms between the pleura and the lungs so that is called as tension pneumothorax that is one of the causes of sudden cardiac arrest and then somebody traveling for long distances or somebody on steroids or oc pills they sit for long time for six hours eight hours ten hours say in a flight or during the work hours they can develop something called as a pulmonary embolism it is same like your chest pain because of the heart attack but here you know that the vessels are blocked in the heart that is a coronary mm. here it is a pulmonary mm. so the lungs where the blood vessels are going that can be blocked and then there can also be something called as either a blood or a fluid which is encircling between the heart mm. and the membrane mm. that is called as mm. cardiac tamponade mm. so this is again a dangerous one mm. or when you look into the esophagus mm. There can be something called as medical terminology, echelasia cardia, mm. or there can be a tear in the esophagus. Mm. So these are other dangerous things mm. which can happen mm. and the patient can have mm. severe pain. And even tear in uh, major blood vessels in your yes, heart. Yes, that is the aorta, rightly you said. The aorta which, which supplies to the whole part of the body coming out of the heart, mm -hmm. supplying to the whole mm -hmm. part of the body. And so sometimes what happens is there can be dilatation of the aorta or there can even be a tear in the aorta, which is again dangerous. Okay. So when a patient comes to emergency, so how will a doctor know whether the chest pain is a dangerous one or not? So usually the emergency physicians are well equipped when they see a patient they look into something called as airway that is how you take the oxygen then your breathing pattern then look into the heart rate and then you also look into the chest sounds s1 and s2 that is what we hear for mm -hmm. and when you look into all these things you can usually say between whether it is because of a, a dangerous one or a non-dangerous one okay and uh, what and all tests they might ask yes that is very important to 
differentiate between what are the different types of pain which has been causing within the person so whenever a person comes with chest pain or any other symptoms as we discussed so the first and foremost investigation what they do is the ECG that is the commonest term so when you take an ECG you can say whether the patient is having heart attack or not when this patient is not having an uh, having still a chest pain but the ECG can be normal then the doctor will ask for something called as a specific enzymes which are specific for the heart that is called as troponin so when you do a troponin sometimes that can also be normal then they do a serial troponins mm -hmm. Even if that is normal, the further test can be done, something called a CT angiogram. So for the chest, so to look into the blocks if it is there or not. Even an X-ray is good enough to clear whether this patient has a rib fracture or not. So these are the various tests which we do when they come to the emergency with the chest pain. So what are the risk factors for a patient developing heart attack? It's very very important. You, you are lo looking into something called as non-communicable diseases which over the world they look COVID is a pandemic but rather than COVID if you take per lakh population today who are dying it's because of heart attacks. Yes. So it is mainly because your lifestyle changes. We have changed totally our lifestyle. Sedentary lifestyle is one. Obesity is one. Your high tri triglycerides, your smoking habits, mm. your alcohol, your uh, you're not burning your calories at all. You're eating a lot, but you're not burning. So these are your lifestyle modifications, which is very important that they develop are more exposed for myocardial infarction. So recently we are seeing a lot of young actors dying because of a heart attack. Yes. We had Puneet Rajkumar recently and prior to him Siddharth Shukla. Yes. So what are your thoughts on it? It's a tricky question. Uh, many people have their own um, so what do you say answers for it mm -hmm. but when you see into the medical terminology anything which is where too much is also too bad that's what we say mm -hmm. and whenever these actors are the other thing is the youngsters are put into a lot of stress today mm -hmm. and because of the stress there are two factors one is release of your cortisol levels which mm -hmm. we call within the body mm -hmm. that again in turn causes a lot of metabolism mm. and then the triglycerides start mm. uh, getting accumulated. Mm. It not only accumulates in your body and also in your vessels. Mm. So mm. these people tend to eat more. Mm. So their uh, diet uh, is also increasing. So that again increases for the triglycerides. And then second thing is they overzealously start working out for themselves. Mm. So that is another cause. And the third one is there's, uh, there uh, dietary modifications it should always be looked into and medical advice is important for them mm. so timely manner they have to seek medical advice mm. so that what they are doing is right or wrong so what are the lifestyle modifications we can do to prevent heart attack very nice so most important thing is your dietary modifications so whenever you're looking into your dietary modifications a right diet for the right person with the right exercise will always give him the right pathway to lead the life and along with it a sound sleep today a lot of youngsters we see that they don't sleep properly they do get into a lot of activities wherein this the sleep deprivation is there and again that will increase your stress levels and that again we know what will happen so good sleep good food and moderate activity yes that is the right one. Okay. So now, nowadays we are seeing a lot of young adults seeking a cardiac checkup. So what is your advice for them? See, whenever there is some untoward event which is happening around you, hmm. or you see some untoward activity, maybe in your family members or your uh, environment or the social media, it always tends for you. You become very anxious that I have to get it done because another person is getting it done, I have to get it done. As rightly said by our chairman, Dr. Devi Shetty sir, you have to get your cardiac checkup at least once to know your baseline activity so that you know where you're standing in mm. because many a times you may have missed out. Mm. So when you do these tests, it's good that you know your baseline. 
and that's very important to have a checkup done at a basic level okay and um, talking about that uh, anxiety is another uh, issue especially we talked about stress right now so yes. high stress will also increase anxiety yes so we have many patients with anxiety coming with chest pain so what do you have to say about that first always rule out the organic causes mm -hmm. that is many a times what happens is whenever angsters come say they say chest pain anxious all these things we tend to say that he is having psychiatric issues don't jump into such such diagnosis so first rule out all the organic causes mm -hmm. because we have seen patients who come with 19 years or 20 years also who had some kind of a cardiac or a pulmonary etiology so you also know that mm -hmm. so in the same way you rule out them and once you rule out them take a proper history mm -hmm. give them the proper advice and if they are not if everything is within normal limits negative findings then i would rather suggest to have a counseling with a psychiatrist mm -hmm. or a psychologist mm -hmm. so that they will tr give you the right advice mm -hmm. they will try to look into what is playing with your emotions mm -hmm. and your stress factors mm -hmm. and they will give you the right pathway and take you into the right way okay so sometimes chest pain in heart attack or anginal pain as we call it yes. may not may not always present as just pain in chest yes so can you please elaborate more on that like what happens in some of the patients is they need not have a typical chest pain Mm. They can even have a epigastric pain mm. or they can have a back pain also mm. or sometimes uh, just your heart rate they may be feeling that your heart rate is more mm. so unexplained sweating also mm. they may not feel anything that mm. is uh, the extreme types of uh, pain mm. so when they come in also you should mm. also think of mm. this factors or sometimes they may have just mild pain yes but just sweating or they might feel just tiredness we have had patients who just come with tiredness yes and you know with positive ecg changes correct and especially i think it is more with youngsters and females yes you right you have rightly pointed out all these things we have to keep in our mind mm -hmm. and you have given the right advice to the public also in these particular ways i am really enlightened with your way <laughs> <laughs> thank you sir <laughs> and uh, knowing about chest pain actually helps a lot um, uh, what are some warning signs that you can see in some patients before they actually develop heart attack like whatever you said right now maybe a mild pain or some sweating or now and then syncopal attacks which they may not be feeling that okay i had or sometimes a giddiness also and when you're walking suddenly you feel that you're ex you're exhausted but after sitting down and getting up okay you feel that okay again you have to continue but whenever you feel exhausted stop your activity then and there itself mm. okay and seek the advice yes <laughs> okay I think we have covered uh, most concerns regarding chest pain. What do you say, sir? Hundred percent. I agree with you. <laughs> so, do we have to add anything? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> okay then. I hope uh, we addressed most of them. Thank you. Thank you all. Have a nice day. <laughs>